So this is a short revision video for acute injuries. So when you're revising, make sure that you're using the specification, make sure that you've got the spec in front of you um, so you know exactly what to cover in your revision. So here's the specification for this current topic, acute and chronic injuries, and we're going to look today at acute injuries, focusing on hard tissue injuries, soft tissue injuries and concussion. So acute injuries, uh, we need to know this definition. We need to know it in detail, all of it. So acute injury is a, an injury resulting from um, sudden stress on the body associated with a traumatic event. Make sure you put all of that definition when you write it in the exam. Um, to say acute injury results from a traumatic event is too vague. So make sure you've got all of that um, definition in your exam if you're asked to define acute injuries. Um, it's also worth noting that the, the, the stick man there with the tennis racket um, denotes the fact that for this topic area, we need to be able to give practical examples. So a few practical examples here of um, just general acute injuries. We might have, have a bad tackling football that results in a fracture of the tibia, uh, as you can see in the top picture there, or a bad landing in netball that results in um, a sprain ligament at the ankle, as we can see in the picture on the bottom right there. So there would be specific examples that we might be able to use in the exam. Um, some general symptoms of acute injuries then, pain, swelling, inability to move that part of the body, potentially disfigurement dependent on the type of acute injury of the bone or joint that's injured. So now we're going to look through hard tissue, soft tissue and concussion injuries, um, specifically acute examples. So hard tissue injuries are any injuries to bones, joints or cartilage. This is true for um, acute injury and chronic injury. We could substitute those words. But um, hard tissue injuries, bones, joints or cartilage. So in this case, acute hard tissue injuries would be an injury that's uh, resulting from a sudden stress on the body associated with, associated with a traumatic event occurring to... Um, causing injury in either bone, joints or cartilage. So first examples are fractures. Now these are the two gem fractures that we need to know in terms of acute injury. Remember we have studied um, stress fracture as well but that's an example of a chronic heart tissue injury rather than an acute um, heart tissue injury. So fractures open and closed. We've got a disgusting example down there at the bottom of an open or a compound fracture where the bone breaks through the skin. It causes an open wound and obviously a risk of infection. Whereas a simple closed fracture, skin is not broken and the soft tissue um, around the bone is um, there's limited damage there. Symptoms of a fracture, pain, Inability to move the area, deformity potentially, swelling, discoloration. That inability to move um, to move the area is that part of that um, SOLTAPS acronym. So the active movement, can the person move this part of their body? And if they can't, then you might be thinking that potentially they're suffering from a fracture. So the second one is dislocation. This occurs when bones are displaced from one another, moving um, out of their original position. It happens because the joint is pushed, or the articulating bones at the joint are pushed beyond their extreme range of motion. So the ligaments are holding the joint, the bones um, in place at the joint. And if those ligaments are pushed so far uh, beyond their normal range of movement, then it causes those articulating bones to displace from one another. And at the bottom there, we've got an example of um, an elbow joint that's been displaced. So the ulna and radius at the bottom and humerus at the top, those bones that articulate the elbow joint have been displaced from one another because um, they've been pushed so far beyond their normal range of motion that the ligaments haven't been able to hold that joint in place. Um, that would result in severe pain, loss of movement, deformity. You can, you can clearly see that that joint's um, dislocated in the picture at the bottom there. Swelling and the player might even feel or hear like a popping sensation if the joints become dislocated. Okay, so acute soft tissue injuries. Again, we could uh, substitute that acute and chronic um, word out for one another but any soft tissue injury is an injury to skin muscle ligaments or tendons and in this case we're looking at acute soft tissue injuries so sudden um, injuries something that's occurred suddenly 
associated with a traumatic event um, that's resulted in damage to skin, muscle, ligaments and or tendons. Um, so we've got, I don't know what the dog's doing. So we've got, um, first example, a contusion and hematoma. Contusion is um, caused when blood vessels rupture or tear. And that might happen due to a fall, uh, a direct or indirect impact. Um, and the hematoma is the bruise that then accumulates because of the congealed blood that's accumulating after um, the tear or rupture. Um, symptoms would be swelling, discoloration and pain. And we can see an example there on the um, inner thigh of the, of the player there. Um, next example, sprain caused by the overstretching or tearing of the ligaments. There are three grades to sprains. That's a bit of extra detail. It's on the handouts that you've already got. Um, obviously, this video is just an overview. I won't go into detail about those. Usually caused by a fall, um, a direct, again, or an indirect impact. When we're talking about a direct impact, we would be maybe saying um, a player or a ball that's hit somebody. So um, with the contusion that we see there, that might have been a ball, a hard ball, like a hockey ball, hitting somebody's inner thigh, and that's caused the, contu the contusion and hematoma. Um, indirect might be um, like a fall or something. So... Again, with the sprain, it's the fact that that joint's been forced beyond its normal range of motion and the ligaments have been overstretched or they've been torn. Um, and if we went back to that picture at the start, the netballer there, she landed awkwardly like, and that might be a picture of her ankle that evening. Swollen, discoloured, painful. Um, then we've got abrasions, damage to skin caused by scraping against a plane surface. This is like a grit, often to the knee, to the hands, the elbows. Um, elbows. Might be an open wound. If it was, it'd need cleaning um, so that it didn't get infected. Could require stitching. Uh, symptoms, redness, bleeding, swelling, pain. A lot of these symptoms are the same as we go through. And finally, we've got blisters occur due to friction and cause separation between layers of skin that become filled with fluid. We've all probably had a blister in the past. Often we get them on the heels like um, in the picture there due to ill-fitting shoes. So they can be avoided by using correct equipment. Um, and obviously the symptom would be the fact that we can see that fluid filled area and the pain. Okay, finally we've got concussion. Um, a, concussion, a concussion is a brain injury that results in disturbance of brain function. Um, and we can see some examples. So the picture on the left there shows the head like tilting forward and the brain coming and hitting the inside of the skull at the front of the skull there. Um, towards the right hand side of that picture, we've got the head tilting backwards and the brain going back in the skull and hitting the back of the skull. The one in the middle is, is like a twisting action and the brain twisting inside the skull. And all of these um, would result in potentially disturbance of brain function which is what concussion is um it could be caused due to a direct blow to the head so we've got anthony joshua there on the right who's been punched in the head and um that potentially could cause a concussion or it could be an indirect blow to another part of the body so a high tackling rugby could j like jar the neck jar the head and the brain then hit the inside of the skull, causing that disturbance of brain function and therefore concussion. I've just separated the symptoms there because there are some more serious symptoms like seizures, loss of consciousness. They would be really obvious. Um, if a player went down and then we're having a seizure and they'd had a knot to the head, we could we probably presume they're suffering concussion. But there are some like lesser symptoms like just being slow to get up and maybe touching your head feeling of fatigue might be a little bit less obvious but we know um from the six r's from that acronym of the six r's we know what to look out for for concussion and um what the process of treatment is might be a good idea to go back and have a look at those six r's now